This is the third in a series of three videos looking at how you complete a basic setup of a Synology router. If you watched our previous video, you would have seen that we have the modem and the Synology router connected together. The modem is powered up and we're now ready to switch on the router. You will find on the back of the router a click switch. When you press the switch in, the router will switch on. We are now ready to configure the router. We'll be using a computer, but you can configure your router using the Synology DS Router app for iOS or Android. With the Synology router switched on, we can now look to see if we can find it in our list of wireless access points. We are looking for a wireless access point called Synology Router. This is the default name that Synology give all of their wireless routers out of the box. If the wireless access point called Synology Router is not being displayed, you need to double check that the Wi-Fi switch on the side of the router is in the on position. Now that we have Wi-Fi enabled on our router, we can see the access point called Synology Router. When we connect to the access point, we are asked for a password. This password is Synology, all in lowercase. When we click Join, if we have a newer version of the router's firmware, a setup window will automatically open. If you find that your computer is not displaying this screen, you can still access the setup window via your internet browser. In the address bar, simply type 192.168.1.1 and press enter. As you can see, you get exactly the same window opening in your browser as you do the one that opens up automatically on your computer screen. However, for this demonstration, let's use this one. As you can see, we're informed that we can link and share all possibilities and we have a start button. When we click start, we're asked to set up an administrator's account. A username is already suggested. However, you might want to consider changing that username to something other than admin, perhaps router administrator or something along those lines. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to stick with admin. The next thing we have to consider is an administrator's password. As you can see, as I type in the password, the password strength is identified. You can see that the password I've used is weak. A password should really use a series of uppercase, lowercase, numbers and special characters. So let me try again. My new password has now been identified as strong. Next, I need to confirm the password I wish to use. We then have an option to view the end user license agreement and a tick box to agree to send anonymous data to Synology. I'm going to remove that tick. We can now click Next. We now need to set up our Wi-Fi network. The first thing we need to do is give our wireless access point a name. As you can see it says Synology Smart Connect at the moment, so we're going to change that to something a little bit more meaningful. I think I'll use My Doodad's Wi-Fi. Next we need to create a password for our wireless access point. It's very important that this password is different from the administrator's password you just created. Again, when creating a password for your Wi-Fi network, make sure that you use a series of uppercase, lowercase, numbers and special characters. This precaution will help to ensure that nobody gets easy access to your home network. Again, using the password strength indicator, you can see that the password I've chosen is strong. The final step in this section is to set the country. Now you must make sure that you use the right country as it could create legal problems for you if you don't. In this example, I'm going to choose United Kingdom. You can see that there is also a warning at the bottom of the screen about making sure that you're using the right country setting. But as our country settings are correct, we're going to click Next. 
We're now taken to set up your operation mode. The operation mode we're currently in is for wireless router. This happens to be the correct setting for the configuration we are using, which is to have the Synology router connected to the internet via a modem. There is a second operation mode, which is to use the wireless router as a wireless access point. The note informs us that we're in bridge mode, where we are joined together with another router, which is connected to the internet. As we're not using bridge mode, I'm going to return it back to wireless router. We're next asked if we want to set up external access to SRM. SRM is Synology Router Manager, which is a graphical interface to make managing your network and Wi-Fi settings simpler. By enabling this setting, we could remotely access and control the Synology router. As I have no need for this setting, I'm going to leave it as disabled. We can now click Next. We're now ready to set up our internet connection. You can see the default setting for internet connection is currently set to PPPoE. Clicking on the drop down arrow will display some additional options, but as PPPoE is the correct setting for a Plusnet account, we're going to continue to username. When you sign up with an internet service provider, they will provide you with a username that you need to type in here. They will also provide you with a password, which you need to type in to the password field. As my internet service provider has no special requirements, I'm going to leave this tick box unticked. With all of my settings correctly entered, I can click apply. The router will now configure itself based on the choices that we've made. As the router is being configured, the Join Synology Router window will close. This is because the wireless access point name is being changed from Synology Router to whatever we've named it. In this case, we've called it My Doodad's Wi-Fi. This means that we now have to connect this computer to the newly created My Doodad's Wi-Fi access point. And when we try and connect to the My Doodad's Wi-Fi access point, we're going to be prompted for a password, which of course is the password that we created for our wireless network. We can then click join and we'll be connected to our new wireless access point. We can now load our internet browser and attempt to connect to a website. I'm going to try and connect to the BBC homepage. Now that we have an internet connection and we've created a basic wireless access point, we next need to log on to the Synology Router Manager. This is to check that the router has the latest updates. Having the latest updates will help ensure that your router is performing to its full potential while also being as secure as possible. So let's open a new tab and in the address bar, we're going to enter 192.168.1.1 again. When we press enter on the keyboard, we're shown the Synology Router Management sign-in page. We now need to enter the administrator name and password that we used when we configured the router. We're now taken to the Synology Router's graphic interface. As this is the first time we've accessed the SRM, we are welcomed and shown some tooltips. Basically, we have five icons. The first is to access the built-in and installed packages from the main menu. Then we have a link to the network center to manage our network settings. After that, we have the control center to actually manage the router itself. Then we have package center, which allows us to install apps, which will enhance the functionality of the router. And then finally, we have the SRM help, which will give you assistance if you have any problems. Now that we've run through the actual tips, we are presented with a pop-up window which asks us to keep our router up to date. So you can see that we have the option to register the router and also we have a link to click that we can go straight to the update settings for the router. I'm going to click OK here 
and I'm also going to close this window down and I'm going to open the control center so I can show you exactly where you need to go to update your router. You can see that opening the control panel doesn't give me much room so because it's a browser I'm just going to open up the browser window a touch. Now that we can see the option called system we can see that the router is already checking for the latest SRM update. As the router has found an update we're going to choose the download button to download that update to the router. For some reason the request to download the update didn't register so I'm going to have to click the download button for a second time. Once the download does start we have an indicator which shows us the percentage of download that has completed. While we wait we need to also check another setting. This is the regional options. You can see that in current time that the time zone is set to GMT Casablanca which is actually incorrect for my location. Generally the router should not be affected by using the wrong time zone but if you plan to use parental controls or filter bandwidth at specific times of the day the time zone on the router should be correctly set. With the date and time now correctly updated, we can return to the update and restore settings. You can see that the update is now ready to be installed. Before we start the update, we're given a warning that the system is not to be shut down while the update happens. We're going to click yes, and we now have to wait for the update to install. Updating a Synology router can take a considerable amount of time. This update took roughly 5 minutes. But once the update is completed, your router will restart and the browser will automatically update to display the Synology router sign in page. I'm going to log back into the router just to make sure that everything is OK. You may have noticed that I don't ever save the password to the computer. Uh, this is just a simple security measure because this computer is used by multiple people and I don't want easy access to the router. I'm also going to disable this reminder window for router updates. Finally, I want to make sure that the computer can still connect to the internet. So I'm going to return to the page I loaded up previously and I'm just going to try and load up another website. In this case, amazon.co.uk. So now that we have the basic setup of the Synology router complete, we will next be looking at some of its more advanced features.